Hey everyone. One of the weapons the F-14 can carry is the AIM-9 Sidewinder. The AIM-9 Sidewinder is a short-range air-to-air missile. It uses an infrared seeker to lock onto its target IR signature, making it capable of tracking a target both during daytime and at night. The F-14 Tomcat is capable of carrying all Navy versions of the AIM-9 Sidewinder, from the AIM-9G up to the AIM-9M. The heat blur version of the F-14 Tomcat is currently modeled as carrying the AIM-9L and AIM-9M. So let's jump in and talk about how to employ the AIM-9 Sidewinder in the F-14 Tomcat. Alright, the first thing we will want to do is cool the AIM-9 seeker head. To do this, you need to press the SW cool button on the ACM panel. Even though the missile will show ready, cooling the seeker head takes about 60 seconds. So you'll want to get into a habit of pressing this well before you need to use it. With the weapon selected, you can tell how cool it is by its tone. You can hear the tone get louder and more high pitched as it cools. And when the seeker sees something, the same is also true. When uncaging the seeker to lock onto a target, if it's not ready, it will not give you a good tone. Notice you can't hear the tone at all. However, if we lock again and continue to wait, as the seeker cools, you will start to hear a proper tone. You also may want to make sure that you rearm after about 2.5 hours after pressing the cool button, because the coolant will run out at about that time. All AIM-9 variants, starting with G and later, are capable of using SEAM, or Sidewinder Expanded Acquisition Mode, which allows the missile seeker head to be uncaged to track the target within 40 degrees of the ADL. This allows the pilot to lead the target and improve missile performance. It also allows the Weapon Control System, or WCS, to slave the seeker to attract a target within 20 degrees of the ADL, allowing an off bore sight acquisition, and allows the WCS to control the seeker head scan pattern. For the following demonstrations, I have pre-cooled the seeker by pressing the SW Cool button well before the engagement, so please keep this in mind. Let's take a look at the modes that can be used to acquire a target using the IR Seeker. First, we need to select the Sidewinder. To do this, open up your Master Arm cover, flip the Master Arm switch to up, make sure your HUD is in AA mode or air-to-air -air mode, then press the Weapon Select Up binding until you see SW at the bottom of your HUD. The first scan mode is the default mode that is selected just by selecting the weapon, and it is called Double D. I'm not kidding. It basically scans in a cone about six degrees wide in a three second interval. As the seeker scans the sky, it will emit a low growling tone. As the seeker moves over an IR signature, the tone will get more high pitched. Just before or when you hear the high pitched tone, you can press the cage seam button binding. This will uncage the seeker and allow it to track the target in its current field of view. If the lock on is successful, the high pitched tone will remain and the seam lock light will illuminate on the ACM panel. Once this occurs, you want to position the aircraft into a position that gives the missile the best performance by pulling lead and then the pilot can launch the missile by pulling the trigger. I do want to make note that the seam lock light does not technically mean the target is locked. The more appropriate indication is the lock on tone. The reason for this is that right when you uncage the seeker, the seam lock light will illuminate for about four seconds, whether lock on is successful or not. So if you see the light, but no tone, do not pull the trigger. Now we launched the missile with the trigger and some of you are probably wondering, why are we pulling the trigger in some planes and pressing the pickle button or weapons release in other planes? Well, each plane is different, but for the F-14, just remember, 
that the trigger is for forward firing munitions like rockets, missiles, guns, and the pickle or weapons release is for things that just fall off the plane, like bombs. So remember, you cannot fire rockets or missiles and guns at the same time. Man, no wonder this thing got replaced. Calm down, I'm kidding. Now the second mode you can set the Sidewinder in is Boresight, or B-R-S-I-T. This is the old Boresight mode where the Seeker is slaved to the ADL and has a 2.5 degree field of view. This is great for when the bandit is right off your nose and you want a very precise way to lock the Seeker onto him. Let's demonstrate this real quick. So again, Master Arm cover up, Master Arm switch up, HUD to AA mode, Weapon select to SW, now we press the Boresight switch. We put the bandit on the ADL. And once we have tone, we can fire our missile. Okay, now, what if you already use something like VSL or PAL or PLM acquisition modes to lock the bandit? Let's take a look at how we can slave the seeker to the WCS. This process is pretty much the same, only for this demonstration we will assume we are already fenced in and weapons hot. Once we've acquired a radar lock-on, we simply make sure that the bandit is within the 20 degrees of our ADL, press the cage seam button binding, the seeker will slave to the WCS, and we should hear tone and see seam lock on the ACM panel. On the VDI, you should see a steering T. For optimal missile performance, you want to put this on the center of the aircraft reticle and simply fire the missile. It's simple as that. That about does it for the AIM-9 Sidewinder. I hope this helps you understand all the various ways to lock onto a bandit and employ this weapon. Remember, if you have any comments or questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments section below. Remember to like and subscribe, and I will catch you guys next time.